cover it. And what that means, Father, is you will know when that seed is mixed with faith. You will say, put in the sickle. You will say, it's deliverance day. You will say, it's healing day. You will say, hallelujah, it's manifestation time. You will say, the harvest has come. Because you know, without faith mixed with your word in our hearts, it's impossible to please you. But once that time comes, because we have spent the time, Lord, meditating in your word and allowing that word to work a work in us and become flesh in us till we're consumed with the truth of it. There's nothing in heaven or on earth or under the earth that can hinder our 100-fold return. The harvest is ready, and we will see the manifestation of whatever, our healing, our deliverance, our financial blessing. But that's how the kingdom works. Thank you for unlocking to us, Lord God, your wonderful anointed supernatural process for receiving a full harvest of manifestation in you. Teach us on today, Holy Spirit, that which you have placed in my heart. Let the people hear you like never before. Don't let anyone shut down and say, well, we kind of know that. We don't. We're going to another dimension and another level of understanding. Because of you, Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. But with you, we can do everything. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on and praise him with me. Come on, come on, give the Lord a hilarious praise, offering. Hallelujah, come on, you can do better. I didn't say praise me, I said praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, come on, out of your flesh. Hallelujah, tap into the spirit. Glory to God, hallelujah. We hunger and thirst for more of you, Lord Jesus. Bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Those that have been here in this church for a while know that there was a section of time um, in the past, not too, too many years ago, when I taught a series on the gift of tongues. And God sent me anointed to say to the body of Christ that that is a gift that is so powerful but there were many in the church that was not using it because they didn't understand the benefits. Well, God gave me a message entitled God's Grace Gift of Tongues. Now, you notice that this time I added the word grace gift because I never looked at it like that before until God began to reveal it to me. On today, I believe that Holy Spirit has a powerful revelation for us that's going to change us forever. I know that everything that God does is for a specific pur purpose, but when you don't understand the purpose of a thing, I remember Miles Monroe says, you will abuse it. Yeah. And so I would like for us to go to our foundation scripture on this morning, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and I promise you that you're going to look at the grace gift of tongues differently than you ever did before. Acts chapter 2, in the Amplified, I want to lift up verses 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. Somebody say one place. Somebody say they were together. I look at that word as unity. They were all unified together in one place. They all were had expectation. Do we have any unity in here today? Do we have an expectation? Oh, glory to God. Verse 2, when suddenly there came a sound from heaven like the rushing of a violent tempest blast. Hua, wind, which we know is also transcribed Holy Spirit. And it filled the whole house in which they were sitting. Holy Spirit can manifest himself as the wind. He can manifest himself as fire. He can manifest himself as the glory of God. He can 
manifest himself as the anointing of God. He can manifest himself as the gifts of God. There's all types of ways Holy Spirit will manifest himself. He can fill this room to everybody in here can feel his presence, and yet he can also settle, hallelujah, hallelujah, our attention on the fact that he's on the inside of us. Is that good? Hallelujah. And there appeared, verse 3, to them tongues rem resembling fire, which were separated and distributed and which settled on each one of them. So this, this grace gift, hallelujah, of tongues settled on every person that was in that upper room. And we know the Bible tells us if we, you know, read um, before this particular chapter that there, that room, the upper room was filled with at least 120 or more were in that room, both men and women. Verse 4. And they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls, glory to God, with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other different foreign languages or tongues as the Spirit kept giving them clear and loud expressions in each tongue in appropriate words. Holy Spirit filled everyone in that upper room with the ability to speak in other or different foreign languages that they had never learned in their flesh. I call it God's grace gift of tongues, and I'm going to explain to you why I call it that. This powerful grace gift of God was given to the New Testament church. Somebody say New Testament. New Testament. On its birthday, the birthing of the Lord's church, we call it the birthday. This would, this would be the birthing of the Lord's church, and the gift that was given on the birthing of the Lord's church is his grace gift of tongues because the birthing of his church brought the church from under the law into the gospel of grace. Is that good? But listen. So the first Pentecost gave the law under the old covenant. But this Pentecost gave the spirit. And the Bible says the law killeth or reminds us of death. Ooh, bless his name. But the spirit gives life. And we know the story. Under the old covenant, when they rebelled against God, the Bible said 3,000 died in one day. And we know that when the spirit came upon the Lord's church, the Bible says 3,000 was given life. They became part of the Lord's church. Is that awesome? And so this gift is called the grace gift of God because it's the only gift of the Spirit that the old time patriots did not receive. They could work miracles, they could do all kinds of things, they could give prophetic words and all of that, but they could not receive the gift of tongues. That's specific for the Lord's church. I don't know about you, but everything on the inside of me is lifting up. Yeah. Ooh, glory to God. When God would give a specific, church, a, a specific gift to his church, means you and I need to pay close attention. Are you with me? Yeah. This is the very first, somebody say first, first, grace gift given to the New Testament believer, speaking in other tongues. Before they knew about any of the other gifts, this was the first gift that was revealed to them. Is that awesome? And when a person gets born again, that should be the first gift they received after accepting Jesus, is their prayer language, their new supernatural language. Glory to God. The infilling of the Holy Spirit. Bless your holy name. A language that you and I did not learn in the natural realm but God's supernatural grace gift has been given to you and I when we were filled 
with God's promised Holy Spirit. Chapter 1, verse 8. Just look over on the other page. The Bible says, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses, starting in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the very bounds of the earth. And we know that if we continue to read chapter 2, we will see, glory to God, that every person of every nation that was in, that, in the known world at that time heard the gospel. They heard the message of the gospel preached in their own language, telling of the mighty works of God. Is that awesome? That is awesome. So we're going to touch on that in a moment. But I want us to back up a little bit because in order for this message to really have the authority that I believe we need to understand how, how, how powerful this gift is, we need to go back to the Old Testament because it was prophesied there. Actually, by the prophet Isaiah, he predicted this awesome supernatural event in Isaiah 28, verse 11 and 12. And I have read this many times, but I didn't have such an understanding of it as Holy Spirit has given it to me now. So let's go to Isaiah 28. Look at verse 11 and 12. Tell the Lord thank you. Come on, the more we thank him, the more revelation we will receive. Amen. And I done loosed you to receive it, so you can't be stopped up in tradition. Amen. Verse 11. Starts off with no, but the Lord will teach the rebels in a more humiliating way. By men with stammering lips in another tongue. Will he speak to his people, says Isaiah, and teach them his lessons. To these complaining Jews, the Lord had said, this is the true rest. Now I want you to connect something here. Glory to God that I heard um, Pastor Prince teach on it really gave me more understanding. He said, this is the true rest. This grace gift of tongues is connected with true rest the way to true comfort and happiness that you shall give to the weary and this is the true refreshing we have to if we keep this in contact those that have the ability to use what we call stammering lips or another tongue glory to God this is a true refreshing, yet they would not listen to his teachings. And we're going to confirm some things when we go to the New Testament because I always want to take scripture and keep it in context and bring it to the new, otherwise it's not applicable to us. Here, God would use his people to release his message in another tongue to the rebels. And he also promised the weary, true rest and true refreshing. This prophet, Prophet Isaiah, was revealing these two personal benefits of tongues that I want us to bring over to the New Testament, and I'll confirm it when we get over there, but I want you to really underline this. Two personal benefits of tongues revealed in the prophetic word of Isaiah that will come in the future, and it will be fulfilled in Acts chapter 2 and also in Hebrews chapter 4. And we will go there. The word stammering, as I looked up that word, does not mean that the language would not be genuine, but that some of the people hearing it would not understand it. But this spiritual experience would bring rest and refreshing to all who would accept this grace gift during the church age. Let's go to Acts 2. Remember, refreshing and rest is connected to our grace gift. So we're in Acts 2. I want to go to verse 12 and 13. Acts 2. 
verse 12 and 13. And all were besides themselves with amazement and were puzzled and bewildered, saying one to another, what can this mean? Now remember, we just read that they were all filled, verses 1 through 4, remember? So let's connect it. So they were besides themselves with amazement. They were puzzled and bewildered, saying to one another, what can this mean? But others made a joke of it. Remember in, in, in Isaiah it said that some would make fun of it and they wouldn't receive it? God had predicted it. But others made a joke of it and des derivatively said, they are simply drunk. Because to them they sounded like somebody with stammering lips. And full of sweet intoxicating wine. And we know of course Peter said, you know, <laughs> they're not. It's just 9 o'clock in the morning. He says, but this is the beginning of what the prophet Joel spoke about. And he begins to explain, hallelujah, how the spirit of God will come upon male and female, young and old. Amen? So this word stammering doesn't mean that, you know, that it's just, just sounds or gibberish. But also, the Lord said, this spiritual experience would bring rest and refreshing to all who would accept this grace gift during the church age. That's our, that's our age. Amen. Let's go to verse 38. And let's finish hearing what Peter says. Because I don't have time to go through all the scriptures. It's a very long chapter. And you can go back and do your research. But I'm not taking anything out of context. I'm keeping everything in the context of what we started off with. In the first through the fourth verse, they were filled. Uh, a Holy Spirit came upon them. They began to speak with other tongues. Then verse 12 and 13, they began to question what was going on. Some believed, some did not believe. That's what was prophesied in Isaiah. Verse 38, and Peter answered them, repent and change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner selves instead of rejecting it. There's a gift coming for your inner self. Instead of rejecting it, you need to repent, change your views, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of and release from your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5 of Acts 2 says, Now there were then residing in Jerusalem Jews, devout and God-fearing men from every country under heaven. All right? Back to verse 39. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is to and for you and your children, and to and for all that are far away, even to and for as many as the Lord our God invites and bids to come to himself. There's nowhere in the scriptures where it talks about, in the New Testament, where it talks about the believer receiving the Holy Spirit, that it is not also letting us know that Holy Spirit has a language for every one of us. His ability to talk to us and through us. Because we're never talking. When we're praying in the Spirit, when we're engaged in our heavenly language, we're never talking to man. That's why they will not have an understanding of what we're saying. We're always talking to God, the Spirit of God. Are you with me? Let's go for, forward. Jesus also spoke about this grace gift as one of the attesting signs that will accompany the believer. Let's go to Mark 16. Everything we will confirm with the word. Mark 16, starting with verse 17. And these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. So you can see how important it is to receive your prayer language in order for the other gifts to operate in us. Because the gift of, 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 of tongues is actually the first gift that God gave to the New Testament church. And so we need our prayer language to release the gifts of the spirit sometimes we wonder why the gifts of the spirit aren't operating in us because we're not operating in our gift of tongues because we can't heal anybody 
But the spirit of God that lives inside of us is the one that reveals to us everything we need to do, the wisdom of God. And when you pray in the spirit, you're not connecting with your own intellect because we might look at somebody with cancer and say, I can't pray for them. I don't have enough faith. We look at somebody with a headache and maybe we'll think we can heal them. But let me tell you, with the Holy Ghost, nothing is impossible with God. After we pray in the spirit, Holy, Holy Spirit will come up upon us. Hallelujah. And these attesting signs will follow us. It's the grace gift of God. It is the gift that causes us to rest in him and have refreshing. Prophesied by Isaiah. Oh, glory to God. Listen. And the Bible says they will speak in new languages. They will pick up serpents, and even if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will get well. Woo, those with stammering lips in another tongue. God will use to be a manifestation to people who do not believe. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. And that's why the church hasn't had a whole bunch. God show me, hallelujah, progress. Because we don't understand that grace gift put us in a position for the gifts to be turned on in us. Holy Ghost is the gift giver. Oh, bless his name. How can we expect the gift of healing, the gift of, of revelation and wisdom and all those other gifts if we reject the first gift given to the church? And so many in the body of Christ do not recognize the gift of speaking in tongues. Verse 19. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and he sat down at the right hand of God. He established our new covenant. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord kept working with them. Oh, glory to God. Well, who do you think he's referring to as the Lord? Holy Spirit. He kept working with them. I feel God. And confirming the message. Glory to God. By the attesting signs and miracles that closely accompanied it. He confirmed the message. When we pray in our heavenly language, when we seek God, hallelujah, for those that have no faith in God, those that do not believe, those who are sick, those who are afflicted, when we pray in our heavenly language, we're tapping into the Holy Ghost, and he will confirm the message that we're speaking because we don't know in our own intellect what we're saying. He will say, yeah, that one needs you to lay hands on. That one you need to pray for. That one you need to, he will give us the instruction. He will give us the message. He will work with us. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Woo, those words come from the Holy Ghost. What we need to be doing. I feel God. The new covenant believer will speak in new languages. They will find rest and refreshing. The apostle Paul quoted Isaiah 28, 11, and 12 as we read in his first letter to the Corinthians chapter 14. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 14. Ooh, thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Tell the Lord thank you. Verse 21. Before we start reading verse 21, if you have a reference in your Bible, what does it say at the bottom of that verse? Isaiah 28, so this is the exact words that I read in Isaiah about the prophetic word of the coming of the Spirit, those people who would be given the gift of stammering tongues or another language. And it's quoted here in the New Testament. That's why we have to read the Old Testament. It's always pointing to something in the New Testament. It's fulfilled in the New Testament. So what does the apostle say here? It is written in the law by men of strange languages, or he called the stammering tongues. And by the lips of foreigners will I speak to this people. And not even then will they listen to me, says the Lord. Thus... That's how we know he's talking about unknown tongues here, because we keep it in context. Thus, unknown tongues are meant for a supernatural sign. Not for believers. We don't need a sign. We are the sign. But for the unbelievers, on the point of believing, while prophecy inspired preaching and teaching and interpreting the divine will and purpose is not for unbelievers, on the point of believing, but for believers. 
So in other words, God's gift to us of unknown tongues, people will say, I'm hearing the gospel in my, in my own language, but those are people who shouldn't be speaking my language. That's a sign to them. Where God will speak in our own language, prophetic words, he's targeting his church. It's for the believer. Are you with me so far? So, the apostle Paul was anointed by God to reveal great revelations concerning God's grace gift of tongues. And he quoted the Old Testament Isaiah to let us know, glory to God, Hallelujah, that when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays, but my mind is unproductive because it doesn't come through our intellect. It's the gift of God. Amen. Tell somebody it's our birthday gift. It's our birthday. Yeah. So on today, Holy Spirit is going to give us revelation from the word of God about some of the benefits connected to God's grace gift of tongues. We need to remember what we read in Acts 2, 1 through 4. I call this the law of first mention in the New Testament because it is the introduction of our birthday gift, the first gift that the New Testament believers received. So first we must understand that it wasn't until Jesus established his church that anyone spoke in other tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. The scripture says in the Amplified, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men. Come on, help me. But to God. Who, in their right mind, don't want to be able to speak accurately to God. Every day, every moment of the day, you and I have the ability to use our birthday gift. Oh, glory to God. You and I don't have to wait for an appointment. You and I don't have to be in a particular place or in a particular posture. You and I could be driving down the street. We could be sitting in our homes. We could be at our desk at work. Y'all ain't saying nothing. We could be in the grocery store. Oh, bless his name. And God will begin to give us, hallelujah, I want to say an appointment with him. And then shortly after that, when you really understand the gift that God has given you, the interpretation will come from Holy Ghost. He will give you the meaning of the message. And these signs shall follow you. And before you know it, you're introducing somebody to the Lord. Come on, because you're under the unction of the Holy Ghost. You have the wisdom and mind of God. Y'all ain't saying nothing enough for me. I'm telling you, I'm excited about this. And it's all scriptural. He said, we're not speaking to man, but to God. For no one understands or catches his meaning because in the Holy Spirit he utters what? Come on, y'all. He utters what? Secret truths. Secret truths. How would you like to have a truth about somebody? Hallelujah. To get their attention, these, this sign is for the unbeliever. And you walk up to them and you, you think it's great when a, a prophet comes and says, uh, who lives at 3? O2 Main Street. And you go, ah, ah, that's me. How did he know? And, 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 and is your last name Woods? Yes, my last name is Woods. You get excited. But every one of us have the ability. Whatever is necessary to be a sign to somebody who's an unbeliever, glory to God, to get them to come to Christ, you'll be walking in that gift. All of a sudden you go, how in the world did I see, I see these letters? 204. That's not for you to go and play, play numbers. That's not for you to go to the, come on somebody, to Foxworth. That's not what he's giving you the number for. <laughs> Let me write this number down and play this number. No, that's not what it's for. It's for supernatural intervention. Hallelujah. To give revelation, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, Holy Spirit will interpret that message so that you now, hallelujah, are equipped to bless somebody supernatural. You want to be a sign and a wonder to this world. Yes. Come on, church. We got to stop being ordinary. Just coming to church, getting filled up. When we come in here, we come for the purpose of getting filled up, but we go out there for the purpose of being a sign and a wonder. And these attesting signs shall follow. 
They will speak in new tongues. They'll cast out devils. Come on, saints. We'll lay hands on the sick and they'll get healed. The Bible says, because in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, in him, that's where the gift comes, in him, in the Holy Spirit, you and I utter secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. You'll say, how in the world did I know that? God will have you praying for nations. You'll interrupt some things that the enemy's getting ready to do. How did I know they was getting ready to do X, Y, Z? Because Holy Ghost gave you the message, then interpreted in your own understanding. Is that good? Yeah. Give the Lord some praise right there. Oh, I feel God. Do you feel your help coming? As the old folks say, listen, this grace gift is our direct hotline to the throne room of God. Woo! We have the ability, because you just, you know, you stand before this person, and you know you're supposed to be praying for them to be healed, but you know that if you just lay hands on them, you know, they may get it, they may not get it, but there are some other root things that God want to show you. Not because he wants you up in that person's business, because he needs to be able to trust you. Glory to God. But he's going to show you some things, and you're standing there, and you're praying in tongues, and Holy Spirit begin to show you some root things, and you'll say, baby, these are some things Holy Spirit is showing me. Come on. I was in my, in my, in my um, bed this morning praying and preparing for the message, uh, for the word for today, and the Holy Spirit just interrupted me about one of my grandkids, and he said, I want you to text them right now and give them this message, and I did just exactly what he said. Listen, saints, God want to use us. There's some supernatural things that's necessary to set people free. Some people are not going to be set free until you give them some information that don't nobody else know but them. They think, ooh, bless his name. And they're going to say, ooh. They're going to say, ooh, I don't know. I feel strange around that person. No, because they know that you are connected with God. And you get ready to release some important information. Is that a good thing? That's where we're supposed to be at. Give the Lord some praise right there. I told you you're not going to be the same again. You're not going to be the same again. Tell your neighbor this grace gift is our direct hotline to the throne room of God. Come on, saints. We get to speak directly to God in the Holy Spirit that dwells in our spirit. We get to utter mysteries. We get to utter secret truths and hidden things that are above our own intellect. Your intellect is your brain. That's a part of your body. Hallelujah. Your intellect can talk you out of supernatural things. Your intellect can keep you from growing in God. You can have such a high IQ in the natural, you can think you know everything. You have no spiritual, come on somebody, interventions of God. God said, I can't even talk to you because you already think you know, but it's according to your intellect that you're talking to me. Oh, come on, saints. I know a great preacher that learned the Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic and could stand up in his message. He would release it. And next thing you know, he didn't believe, hallelujah, that there's a hell. He got it into inclusion. And I would love to listen to him. I say, Ooh, wow, he know the Hebrew words and the Greek. That don't mean anything. Anybody can go to school and learn another language. And be just as off. And they can't be taught by the Holy Ghost because they block the Holy Spirit. Because let me tell you something. This thing called faith have nothing to do with your intellect. Your natural ability. Come on. All of your accolades in school. That's why it's so hard to get somebody real educated or real smart to follow the things of God. And I'm not against education, but let me tell you something. You put it above your spiritual relationship with God, you will be stuck in your intellect. And see, you got to believe this thing by, you got to take this thing by faith. You can't reason this thing. You can't figure this thing out. You just got to believe God. And so don't let all your education and all your ability to read books and all that other kind of stuff stop you from walking in the supernatural of God. Amen. They are some of the hardest people to read. God said he take the foolish, yep. ah, thank you, Jesus, uneducated, and start training them. He'll get you some education, but not until you start depending on him as being your teacher and not your ability to be smart. And if we're not careful, we get into pride. And Holy Spirit will never work through pride. And you, are, you, don't, you, don't, you don't allow anybody to teach you because you think you already know. You know before they say, oh, I already know that. 
Where's the fruit on your tree? <laughs> no, we got to come humble. Like, Lord, I don't know anything unless you teach me. That's how I approach every, every message that I teach. I make sure y'all know that I know. Holy Ghost is getting ready to release some revelation up in here. And even when I open up the scriptures, after I've studied for a whole week, he still releases stuff that he don't unlock until I get up here because he want to make sure that none of us think we know everything. I don't care how much we study. I depend on him to be my teacher. Sometimes I can't even explain it in the natural. I don't need to. There's an anointing on it. And it gets on the people. Y'all better help me. Yeah. I was talking to the Lord the other day, and he was revealing to me, he said, there are some songs that man have written. Be careful, because there ain't no anointing on it. Just because it got spiritual words don't mean that the Holy Spirit released it. Can't you tell when something is anointed when you hear a song? That's why we can't throw away some of the old songs and just get modern. Some of this modern stuff. Listen, uh, my, my sister-in-law was telling me she heard this, this preacher who wrote a song, and he said, he said, I was high when I wrote that song. They had to tickle the ear. We need something that's going to cleanse us, something that's going to heal us, something that's going to deliver us. So, Brother Roy, where's Brother Roy at? Hallelujah. Did he get caught up? We still here? I don't think so. <laughs> Where, Brother Roy? He better step back up in here. I'm talking to him, the music department right now. <laughs> I told you, it's a devil, isn't it? Every time I get ready to talk to a specific people, they be done stepped out. <laughs> the devil, the devil trying, he's trying to have an assignment against me, but I'm not going to put up with it. The people who need to hear it, they always have just stepped out. We're going to get some locks on these doors. Once you in here, you can't get out. They're going to have us on Channel 3, too. That's the church that lock people in. <laughs> It'll hit the news quicker than anything else. <laughs> oh, when you get in that church, boy, you can't get out until they let you out. But anyway, I wanted Brother Roy to hear that because the Holy Spirit said, some of this stuff is not anointed by me. It doesn't change the hearts of people. They're just words, Sister Sheila. Since you do a lot of leading, you can translate this to the other two leaders of the worship team. That's why some songs don't move me. Because I'm very keen in the spirit of, the, of, of, of uh, spirit of God. And I'm not saying that to brag, but I spend a lot of time with God. Yeah, I boast in the Lord, not in me, but I'm very keen. I can feel something. I can feel you. I'm telling you, we are supposed to be able to discern. And there are some songs, they've been out for 55 years, and they will have you crying. They are so anointed. Every song has not been anointed by God just because there's a group out there singing it. Some of them been switching their hips. Y'all know what I mean. You won't know, but then you'll be switching your hips, wondering why this thing done got on me. I want to go back to Divi Divi. <laughs> so you done caught something. It's the wrong something, y'all. All right, that was just a little commercial. Let's get on back over here. We talking about the grace gift of God. Amen. So we have a direct hotline to the throne room of God. We get to speak directly to God. Yeah, y'all have to share with me. I ain't going over it again. I won't, you get the tape, Brother Roy, and hear what I was saying to you that you was not in here. This supernatural grace gift is God's gift of life to us. I want you to repeat that with me. This supernatural... Nope, let's get together. This supernatural grace gift is God's gift of life to us. Yeah, I want you to hear that. 
It's a supernatural grace gift. It is God's gift of life to us. The New Testament saints receive this grace gift, as I said, on our birthday, the birthing of the church. None of the Old Testament believers spoke in other tongues, and the Holy Spirit did not dwell inside of any of them. God used them, but the Holy Spirit never moved inside of them. We are so blessed. That's why you hear me refer to us as a new species that never existed before. There was never a time in history that there were a people, humans, that God moved on the inside of. You need to give God some glory about that. Are you excited about the word? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So let's go now to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. Let's see what that tells us. Verse 4 in the Amplified. He who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves. What's the next word? Himself. Say it again. Himself. Say it again. Himself. When we speak in other tongues, we have heard this before, but you're going to hear it on another, another level of understanding edifies and improves himself. What part of you gets improved and edified? That's what I thought. What did they say? Y'all scared to say it now. They said their spirit. Absolutely not. And I'm going to prove it in a minute. It's not just your spirit. Himself. We've all thought that. We've all thought that. He who prophesies or interprets the divine will and purpose and teaching with inspiration edifies and improves the church and promotes growth in Christian wisdom, piety, holiness, and happiness. That's the reason why the prophets are so important. When churches reject prophets, they have rejected the life of God in that church because prophecy builds and edifies the church. But when we pray in our gift of other tongues, we edify, what does it say? And improves. No. The church is through prophecy. The gift of, and, and I know there's confusion, and it's okay. I want y'all to give those answers because we got to change some way that we're thinking because we're missing some powerful things. And this apostle is anointed to bring us to some truths in the word. It's prophecy that edifies and improves the church. But the gift of tongues edifies and improves himself. And so I would have given the same answer a while ago that we build up and edify our spirit. I would have. Because I focus on praying in tongues and building my spirit and all that stuff. But let's go by what the scriptures say. Can we do that? This grace gift of edifies and improves ourselves when we speak in tongues, the word edify, write this down. Edifies means to build up. It means to construct a house. To edify and improve means to construct a house. It means to repair a house. It means to regain health in that house. Edify means to build an edifice, to enlighten that edifice, to bring understanding in that edifice. This scripture, saints, declares that a believer, while speaking in other tongues, which is God's grace gift, is edifying and improving himself. Now, we are triune. We are not just spirit. That's where we miss some things. Just like we taught on last week, I, uh, probably the third teaching I did on, 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 on the meal that heals, the, that, that people are sick and people are weak and people are dying prematurely in the church because we don't discern that when we eat the bread, we're eating the Lord's body. There's something supernatural that take, takes place when my faith says this is his body, not a cracker. <laughs> 
but this has now become his body. Everything in his body right now, hallelujah, belongs to me. That's why I can quote the scripture, as he is, so am I right now. He's whole. But I got to see his body on that cross as well. He took my sicknesses. I got to see that. He took my weaknesses and distresses. I got to see that. When I eat this bread, I can't just eat bread. I got to get out of the natural. It's not going to do me any supernatural good. That's why God's body of believers can get healed off of the Holy Communion table because it's his body that I'm eating. Everything in him I'm eating. His healthy eyes I'm eating for my eyes. His healthy liver I'm eating for my liver. Y'all ain't saying nothing. His healthy heart I'm eating for my heart. And he said when you discern that it's his body, this is your body. He discerned, he said don't discern this is bread. He said discern it's my body. And then there will not be weak, sick, and people dying prematurely. Then you got to say, this is his blood. I can't look at that cup. It could be water. It could be grape juice. It could be wine. But that cup has to reflect to me that this is his blood. What did his blood do for me? First of all, it forgave me of all my sins, and it declared me righteous. So every time I drink the cup, I got to see his blood, and I'm righteous. The more I tell myself I'm righteous, the more I tell myself, come on, somebody, that my sins have been forgiven, I won't practice sin. Whatever you believe about yourself, you'll walk in it. Amen. So it's the same thing here with the gift of tongues. Everything he gave us is significant. He gave it to us for wholeness. Come on, saints. And so I am triune. I'm spirit. I, I'm a soul. I have a soul, but I also live in a body. So I don't just pray in tongue to build up my spirit. Just like that bread is his body, just like that cup is his blood, I got to understand that when I pray in other tongues, that thing is beneficial for every part of me. It says ourselves. We stop at spirit. We don't allow it. See, whatever you think is all you're going to get out of it. Are you hearing me? It's what we think we get. And if I don't think when I'm praying in tongues that I'm doing more than just build up my spirit, man, because nobody said any other part of you. You just said, one person I heard say flesh, but everybody else was saying spirit because that's what we've been taught. So the tongues have no benefit to my soul or my body? Listen to this. Let's go to scripture and prove it. Ooh, glory to God. 1 Corinthians 6. Ooh, help me, God. My brain is racing. This is so powerful. Tell the Lord, thank you one more time. He's getting ready to unlock something to us. Verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. In the Amplify. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. I thought my spirit man was the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. But what did the, what did the scripture say? The hit right here, and this is what we got to do to wash our minds and change our minds about some stuff. It's telling me that my body is the temple. My body is the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you whom you have received as a gift from God. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. And we know that price was his precious blood. Purchased with a preciousness and paid for in full. It's complete. Made his own. So then I want everybody to finish this last part of this verse with me because I want you to hear yourself saying it. Let's read it together. So then, honor God and bring glory to him in your spirit. You see that? Spirit. We only think we have to, God wants us to bring glory to him in our spirit. No, it says in your body. It's important that we understand that as I go forward. We got to look at key words. 
We can't go by what we learned and then miss the real revelations that Holy Ghost want to give us because God is changing us. God's delivering us. God's getting traditions of men and denominational teachings out of us. We are not a traditional church. We are not going to go after things the same way that we used to. We need to say that was wrong and this is right because we're studying the word. We're not going by what somebody told us. We're in the word together. God commanded us to bring glory to him in our bodies. God cares so much about our bodies, and because we haven't understood and recognized that, we've let the devil destroy our bodies. The devil comes and takes parts from us, from our bodies. Come on, we act like, well, hey, you know, I'm still alive. No, that peace was important. God wouldn't have gave it to you. Our bodies are important to God. Our bodies are his temple. Our bodies are his sanctuary. Our bodies are important. God cares about our bodies. And once we realize that, we won't put up with the devil's junk. You and I need to look at our bodies sometimes and say, this ain't glorifying God. And I'm going to do what God has given me that I can do to change this situation. I don't have to put up with this. God wouldn't have told me to bring glory to him in my body if he didn't care how my body was. And all this time we thinking, my spirit man is the temple of God. The scripture don't say that. You can't find a scripture that says that. And I won't say anything to you that I won't prove it in scripture. Listen. He said he gave his blood. His blood paid the price. Why do you think... I'm not going to go through the scriptures at, uh, uh, above it, but this is important. We keep stuff in context. Why do you think he, he, he talks so much more about sexual immorality and looseness and all that other kind of stuff, more than he does any other sin? And we say, well, all sins are the same, but God don't think so. Our body is his temple. We lay down with anybody and do whatever we want to do. Pre we have so many people that don't want to get married anymore. They just want to have sex, but they don't want to get married. We got young people that think it's okay for two girls to be together and two boys to be together. We got young people that's been perverted by the devil because they don't understand that God said, your body is my temple. What you do with your body makes a difference to God. What you put in it. How you treat it. We are being punished by the devil because we haven't understood that my body needs to bring glory to God. Yes. Not just my spirit. Yes, when they look at me, they need to see Jesus. Yes. You don't see what God said, bring glory to me in my spirit. Our bodies are the temple of God. And our creator commands us to honor him and bring glory to him in our bodies. God never said our spirit is his temple or his house. He never said it. Our reborn spirit lives in his temple. But it's not his temple. Our spirit. Come on, somebody. Our reborn spirit lives in God's house. We house our spirit and our soul. You got to understand, that's the, our, our spirit is already born again. There's nothing that we have to do with it. It's heaven ready when you're born again. But your body will still sin. God said, that's my temple. I want you to understand how important it is for you to present your body to me every single day. Because this is a part of us that can get contaminated in a second. 
Come on, you can have a weak moment and end up in an adulterous or, 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 or a fornication situation that you never even planned on. That's why he talks about it. Shun immorality, all sexual looseness. Flee from impurity in thought, word, and deed. Any other sin which a man commits is one outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is my temple? And if we don't start living something and teaching our young people, they're going to all go to hell over some sex. Because everything goes. Everything on TV is homosexual. Everything on TV is looseness. Everything. Everything is sex toys and everything. We are raising a generation that thinks it's okay. Because it's a subliminal message everywhere they go. They don't mind showing their bodies anymore. They don't care if they don't have on half the day clothes, underclothes, proper undergarments. They don't care. I love my body. Well, we ain't in love with it. I don't want to see you. That's for your husband or your wife. We don't preach the truth and live it. We have to have a standard. But listen, he gave us his grace gift of tongues to edify and improve its health. <laughs> you can't edify your spirit man and improve its health because your spirit man is one with God. The gift, this grace gift was given to us to edify and improve our bodies, our soul. He gave us his grace gift of tongues to edify and improve health, to build it up by praying in tongues. Let's go to Jude, verse 20. Ooh, did I tell you you're not going to be the same? Did I tell you? Somebody start changing already. Hallelujah. Did I show you anything that's not in the scripture? And that's why I gave you scripture, because you need to go at home. Go home, and you study it out, because it's revelation to me already. That's why I can teach it. I qualify to teach you, because I've studied this out. Jude, it's only one chapter, verse 20. That's the last book next to Revelation, in case y'all going everywhere. We don't go to Jude a lot. <laughs> But after today, you will, because this is a powerful scripture here. Verse 20, okay? If you got to Revelations, you went too far. It's right next to it. I want you to get there, because I want to read, and I'll, just half of y'all there. Jude, verse 20. Y'all with me? It's on the screen. What does it say? But you, beloved, build yourselves up. What did it say over there in the scripture we just read? What did it say? <laughs> Edify and improve your, yourself. So now it's talking about building yourself up. Founded on your most holy faith. Make progress. Rise like an edifice. Those are some of the words I gave you that the word edify, the word improve means. So we, are, we make progress, we rise like an edifice higher and higher. How? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Building has to do with a house. Didn't we say that? Look at your notes. Building has to deal with, with, with an edifice. What did God say is his house? Our bodies. So what does tongues got to do with? Our bodies. That's how you can get your body healed. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You will build yourself up. Your body will get healed if you pray in the Holy Ghost. God gave it to you. You're building up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. Something going on with your body, just pray in the Holy Ghost. You're building yourself up. You're improving your health. You're building your edifice. You're making it stronger. You're strengthening yourself. Yeah. It's the 
the gift that God gave to the New Testament believer to stay healthy and whole. God said, you can't do these signs if you're sick. He wants us to have an inward way to stay healthy and whole. God never intended for us to go outside of him for anything. Those things are for the world. I pray in the Holy Ghost all the time. But now I understand why my body getting stronger and stronger. Come on, y'all. I understand some stuff now. See, I, one thing about me, I just want to obey God. I don't always understand everything because it'll come. If you hunger and thirst for truth, it's coming to you. And I wanted to wait. I said, Lord, can I wait until the rest of the people come? He said, no, you give it to the ones that's here. Let them get it however they get it. You can't keep waiting. I wanted to wait. <laughs> I wanted to wait. He said, no, let them get the tape if they want it bad enough. But y'all got to build it up so much so they will not, not want to get the tape. And if they don't, they miss the place. Listen, this scripture is saying our body is God's sanctuary. Does it not say that? Yeah. It says body is God's sanctuary. His holies of holies. He wants his holy place healed. He wants his holy place whole. He wants his holy place complete. <laughs> That's what build up and edified mean. It means wholeness. It means healed. It means complete. Spirit, soul, and body. He wants us whole. By building your whole self up in faith. You do it by praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't it say it right there? Tongues cause us to be encouraged. Tongues console us. Tongues establish us in the faith. Tongues build a permanent construction. That's what it means. Tongues Hallelujah. It means a house or a structure when we pray in tongues. It means to be enlightened. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, your whole body gets enlightened. You're talking about renewing of your mind. It brings you to a place of understanding and spiritual illumination. Just study that word out, edify. You'll see all these words. He wants us to edify our body so that we can do what? Honor him and bring glory to him. I'm preaching harder than y'all saying amen. Y'all looking at me like a dog with a new pan. <laughs> what is this? This is the word. <laughs> I'm preaching hard, y'all. <laughs> so remember, Isaiah said, he was telling us about this grace gift of stammering tongues prophesied by Isaiah and confirmed by the Apostle Paul. So it's not just for the Old Testament because they didn't receive that gift. It was prophesied for the New Testament. And then the Apostle Paul comes back and he confirms it as we already read in Scripture. I had y'all look in your Bible. The reference, it was right there. He was prophesying Isaiah. Am I right? Yeah. So those who speak in other tongues, he also promised R&R, &R, rest and refreshing. Woo! Let some trouble come, just go into tongue. You might start, after a while you'll be, sake. you just relax. You done got all built up. You are refreshed when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Your brain ain't working. Your brain don't have to try to tell you anything because your brain going to reach back at the old crazy stuff. But what about this and what about that? Stuff that's locked in your brain, down in your subconscious. That, tongues don't go there. <laughs> it's a grace gift. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, when I feel myself getting angry at somebody, I go into tongues. Because I want you to know at the same time, it is God's grace gift of war. You go into warfare. Glory to God. Every demon that's trying to come at you, no, uh-uh. They talking to God. I better get out of here. 
Oh, they're having a conversation with God. They're getting some wisdom from God. I got to flee here. I can't stay here. Oh, uh-uh. Pray in tongues about your children. You all know the testimony that I gave you, but I wanted to get out on TV. Let me tell you all something when my boys was being attacked. One of my sons is sitting right here, and he know I'm not lying. They down in, 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 in uh, what's that town? Waterbury. Did everybody get attacked except the two of you? Am I lying to these people? They got hurt. They was in the hospital, y'all. They went to the hospital. And my son said to me on the phone when they called, they said, we don't understand why nobody can hit us. I understand. I was in a tent meeting on Albany Avenue, and I was praying in the Holy Ghost. God said, pray right now. And when I got through praying, I got a release. I pray for my kids in the spirit so many times when they went out I didn't know where they were or what they were doing I prayed in the spirit over my daughter I would pray in the spirit over my grandkids and I would get the rest the refreshing of God God released angels over my boys they said mom we'll be home but I just want you to know that none, neither one of us got hurt one had his spleen punctured one had his ear cut it was all kinds of stuff. I mean, those boys was there to say they couldn't hit us. Do y'all know angels stood around my babies? Do you know I lose? I didn't know. Same thing, God showed me standing at my sink, at my stove one day, and I saw an accident, and it was a big explosion. And I'm like, go into tongues right now. I didn't know who it was or what it was. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, the phone ring. It's my sister-in-law. And she said, I just called to tell you that your brother was just in a, 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 his car was total, but he walked away without one scratch. I said, duh. He said, sis, not a scratch. Car total. You can't make me not believe him. He has given us everything we need. We've got to understand and use it. You can cover your kids even if they're incarcerated. Nobody won't be able to touch them. God taught me as I was listening to Joseph Prince, because I told you he was teaching on this, and he was talking about if your child is strung out on drugs, you pray in the Holy Ghost. And you get the mind of God, and God will speak to that child. Do y'all hear me? God will send a prophetic word. I have seen my kids delivered through a prophetic word. God will send a prophetic word, and I'll give it to my child. He has used prophets to give me a word for my children, and I've given it to them. But because I raised my kids with a fear of God, they knew it was God speaking. Or I would say I had a dream last night, and they would go, oh. They knew God was talking to their mother. We don't have to be fearful raising our kids. Oh, this is the worst time to raise kids. No, it ain't. For the world it is. They got angels. The scripture says they do. Come on, loose those angels every day over your kids. Plead the blood over them and then sprinkle them with the blood. Sprinkle them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Pleading protects and keeps them safe and sprinkling, hallelujah, heals and delivers and sets free every organ, every tissue. Speak to every organ, every tissue. Every single day I speak to my organs and tissues. I, I sprinkle the blood over my body. I didn't always do that because I didn't understand, but I do now. The devil don't want you to have this revelation today. That's why I say, Lord, there's so many of our leaders out. Do you want me to teach this today? He said, yes. Teach it today. I know, and they can get the tape, but the point of it is you already know how I am. I'm a mother hen. I want everybody getting everything. That's why I get frustrated, because some folks don't want what I got. And you get frustrated, because you want everybody to have it. I want everybody free. I mean that. That's in my heart. I'm going to hurry up so I can finish now. I'm almost through. God is so good. Who he said we build ourselves up in faith when we pray in the Holy Ghost. 
You want to build your faith? Pray in the Holy Ghost. See, we would tell ourselves, well, my mind don't know what, but honey, the real you know. <laughs> tongues cause us to be encouraged, as I said. I want you to think about that. When you pray in tongues, after a while you feel encouraged. You don't even know what you said, but your whole self has been in God's presence. You're established in the faith. You build a permanent construction. Your, your body begins to line up with the will of God. You, you don't need surgery. You need tongues. <laughs> After a while, you pray in tongues long enough, you ain't going to need that medicine. I'm telling you. I ain't telling you to stop using it. I'm telling you, you're going to stop. You're going to stop. Causes you to have understanding. It causes you to have spiritual illumination. All of a sudden, you start seeing things that you didn't even know with your own natural mind. And you'll have R&R, &R, rest and refreshing. Let's go to Hebrews 4. Didn't I say both those promises? Amen. Given over in Isaiah? Rest and refreshing. Rest and refreshing. Hebrews. Rest and refreshing. We're going to be edified and built up, and we're going to have rest and refreshing. Verse 1 of chapter 4 in Hebrews, in the Amplified, says, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today. Mm, mm, mm. Let us be afraid to distrust it. This is the only place God tells us, uses the word labor in the King James. Only place he tells us to labor. Labor to get into that place of rest. That means if you got to work hard, get yourself into that place of rest. Well, now we know praying in the Holy Ghost will get you right there. They're connected. They're connected. He said, he said, a new language and rest and refreshing go together. For indeed, we have had the glad tidings, the gospel of God proclaimed to us. We know what God has for us. We know what Jesus has done for us. Just as truly as they, the Israelites of old did, when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. Somebody say, but. but. The message they heard. You can leave out of here today and be just like them. That's why he warns us. You ought to be afraid to distrust what you're hearing today. Don't distrust it. Believe God. Get in the word if you don't understand everything, but I didn't teach you anything that's not understandable. The good, they did not receive the message. The message they heard did not benefit them. Don't let yourself have wasted your time today. Or my time. The message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. With the leaning of your entire personality on God. And absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom, and goodness by those who heard it. So they, many of them didn't profit. And the Old Testament Isaiah prophesied that there's many that would not. He said it. There's some that will, but there's some that will not profit. Come on, they will not receive. And then he says, neither were they united in faith with the ones Joshua and Caleb who heard and did believe. You got to make a decision. I'm believing every word apostle said. If I don't understand every scripture, I'm going to believe God and he'll give me his wisdom. Come on, somebody. He'll give me his wisdom and his power and his goodness to understand. Verse 4. Verse 3, I'm sorry. For we who have believed... That's us who made a decision to believe, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on God. Do enter that rest. I believe, therefore, I do enter his rest. I said, I believe I do enter, his, enter into his rest. I'm not letting anything take me outside that rest. We'll be tempted to come outside of it, but we don't have to. Pray in tongues until you get a release. In accordance with his declaration that those who did not believe should not enter. When he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And this he said, although his works, everything they would ever need to rest, 
have been completed and prepared and waiting for all who would believe. Only thing that will stop us. That's why he said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will come to convict us of what? He said sin, but he wasn't talking about our acts of sin. He was talking about the sin of not believing. Read that whole verse, the act of not believing. That's the only sin Holy Ghost will convict you of. He didn't send Jesus here to convict us of our sins. He didn't come for that. He came to convict us of believing in God. He said, in my righteousness, because I go back to be with the Father, because he did what he did and went back to the Father, now you and I are righteous. He said, judgment, the only judgment that's gonna, that, he, that Holy Spirit would bring is judgment against the devil. He's already been sentenced. He's already been charged. He's already been defeated. That's John chapter 16, I believe it is. Yeah. You can go there later. Write it down and go check it out. He said, although his works have been completed and prepared and waiting for all who would believe, from the foundation of the world. He completed everything. Oh, God, thank you. Is anybody listening? Yeah. So now I want to skip down to, let me find that verse, verse 9 now. So I can't read the whole chapter, but I want to skip down to 9. It says, so then there is still awaiting a full and complete Sabbath rest reserved for the true people of God. What will hinder you from the true rest of God? Unbelief, not believing, not resting in him, not trusting him. It's very clear right here. That's the only thing. Not your sins, but the one sin. Not believing, not trusting what he said. For he who has once entered God's rest also has ceased from the weariness and pain of human labor. Glory. Don't pick that spirit up again. When pain and weariness comes on you, don't pick it up. It's not yours. Pray in tongues. Watch the miraculous happen. Watch rest come. Because he promised us. Watch refreshing come. Ooh, when you get refreshed, you just like, oh Lord, I feel like going on. What are we gonna do next? <laughs> Remember now, the works have been completed since before the foundation of the world. Okay? So we're not waiting for him to do anything. He said, for the true people of God, we have a Sabbath rest. Verse 10. For he who has once entered God's rest also has ceased from the weariness and pain of human labor, just as God rested from those labors, particularly his own. And then he says, let me see, did I go further? Yeah. Verse 11. Let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves and strive diligently. That's the, that's the only place that he talks about striving or laboring. To do what? To enter that rest of God. Because guess what? We got an enemy that will keep you from resting. The devil will keep you in turmoil. The Bible said in the last days, the enemy's coming to wear the saints out. You and I don't have to be worn out. I used to let that stuff go on. Y'all better come on. God said we tolerate, 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 tolerate. Stop tolerating. Use your gift. Get the Holy Communion table. Get in tongues. And use the tools. Use what God has given us. Stop sitting back letting the devil wreck your whole day. When he's already been judged. I feel almost like y'all pushing me to take y'all to that scripture. Because some of y'all looking at me like, did he say that? Yeah, he said it. Yeah, he said it. Just give me a moment. That's right. For he who has once entered God's rest also has ceased from the weariness and pain of human labor, just as God rested on this from those labors, particularly his own. Then he said, let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves and strive diligently to enter that rest of God, to know and experience it for ourselves. He wants you to experience that rest every day of your life. Even if you get a negative report, pray in the Holy Ghost, receive that Holy Communion, and say, come on, somebody, for weakness, this Holy Communion table, because this is the Lord's body and his blood. For weakness, this is my strength. For sickness, this is my health. 
for premature death, this is my length of days. That's what the Holy Communion has provided for us. That no one may fall and perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience into which those in the wilderness fell. Listen to verse 12. Great revelation. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Whoever told us that our tongues are not words that God speaks? We only think it's the English words. But did not our tongues come from God? Are we talking to God? They are his words, because we sure didn't learn them no, in no school. <laughs> Anybody that try to teach you how to speak in tongues, you better run from them. That's the gift that come from God. So it's not just English words. Though these are God words that God speaks. Those words that God speaks is alive and full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Penetrating. When you pray in tongues, not just English words, but tongues, words that God gave you, it says, glory to God, it's penetrating to the dividing line of our whole self, the breath of life, our soul, the immortal spirit, ourselves, and of joints, that's our bones, and marrow is our blood. So it's talking about our bodies as well of the deepest part of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, not just speaking English words, we've done that, but our intellect will mess with them sometimes. But your intellect can mess with your tongue language that came from God. Hallelujah, because your brain don't know what you're saying, but it's effective because God the Holy Ghost is praying the perfect mind of God for us. The perfect mind of God. That's awesome. Glory to God. I don't care if you just have one syllable. Speak it. Till you stop flowing. A baby don't come here saying mommy and daddy. They usually just say dad, dad. We go, ooh, he's saying daddy. Hello. <laughs> you don't know what he's saying. He's just making a sound. This grace gift of tongues and God's rest and repression that will cause us to cease from our weariness and pains of human labor has been completed from the foundation of the world and is waiting for all who would believe and start speaking to God and praying in tongues. Saints, we edify and improve our health when we pray in tongues. We build up our temple. Our temple is what? Our bodies. Come on, talk to me. We repair and restore our bodies when we pray in the Holy Ghost. You need some new cartilage? You need a new spine? You need some new eyeballs? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are building up our temple, our bodies. We are repairing and restoring our bodies by the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. Does that not say it in Romans 8? Let's go there. Romans 8 says what? And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable body through his spirit who dwells in you. Don't you know when we pray in tongues, we're praying in the Holy Ghost. We're praying the perfect mind of God for our bodies. Our mortal body will be healed because Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Is that awesome? That is so awesome. I want to run. Only reason I don't scream is because I, I think I will lose it. We looking for stuff all out here to get ourselves built up and healed and whole when we got the gift of God, when we receive, receive Jesus. And if you haven't released your prayer language, it's just because you have chosen not to. It's the gift of God for every believer. Oh, I, I can't release my tongues. You, just re you, you are not receiving the gift. It's receiving. It's like I receive a birthday gift from you. That's our birthday gift. Our brain want to tell us, well, maybe it ain't for me. That's religion that you got from somewhere. Cast that thing down. It's the gift of God for the church. The old time patriots did not receive that gift. Look at verse 26 of Romans 8. This is my last verse, scripture, I think. 
Romans 8 and 26. What does it say? So too the Holy Spirit comes to our aid. Y'all better help me. He bears us up in our weaknesses. Y'all better help me. How you think he do that? Well, we pray in our heavenly language. For we do not know what prayer to offer. In English, we don't. Nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication, whatever we need. And he pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. I feel like I'm in a courtroom. I have stated my case, y'all. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to and in harmony with God's will. How do you think he's intervening for us through our gift of tongues? when we rest and get refreshing. Saints, this grace gift of God is also his supernatural weapon of war. Holy Spirit activates God's covenant when we pray in groanings and utterances and supernatural tongues to make perfect intercession. You can't intercede better than praying in tongues. I don't know if y'all hearing me. I believe as I close, when we really receive this life-changing revelation from God's Holy Spirit on today, we will start, he will start dealing with us from the inside first. What the Holy Spirit want to do first in us when we start really believing this and we submit ourselves to him, he said he wants to get rid of all our fears, all our anxieties, all our depressions, all our stresses that trigger sicknesses and diseases in our body. When we pray in the Spirit and rest and get refreshing from him, when we utilize our birthday gift correctly, Holy Spirit desires to strengthen us with this supernatural grace gift and free us from physical infirmities and addictions. Let me say this. Natural doctors can only treat us in the natural. Somebody say, thank God for doctors. Yeah, thank God for doctors. But they can only treat us in the natural. They are not equipped to deal with demonic forces. 99 and three quarters percent of all sickness and disease come from demonic attack. Every sickness comes from Satan. Sometimes, you know, we do some stuff that causes our body to break down, but nevertheless, they originated with Satan. A doctor in the natural cannot deal with demons. Hello? The root cause that causes the sickness. And sometimes, as I have said to you all over and over again, some stuff is deeply rooted, rejections, all kinds of stuff that cause sickness, cause you to drip, come on, causes your hypothalamus gland not to release the proper um, uh, hormones and the proper, um, um, what you call it, um, <laughs> chemicals in our bodies. God gave us everything to work correctly, but our brains can throw stuff off. <laughs> can I get an amen right there? Amen. I say God gave us everything to work perfectly, but our brains can throw stuff off. Amen. Yeah. And a doctor in the natural cannot deal with demonic forces or the reasons why. So they'll do what they know to do. Give you medicine or cut it out, one or the other, to help you. They come to try to help you, but how many know that we can have complete deliverance if we trust in God. Yeah, yeah. You and I need to utilize God's grace gift, build ourselves up, restore our spirit, soul, and bodies, give us divine healing and health by God's supernatural means of speaking in tongues. And at the same time, he will give us R&R, &R, rest and refreshing for every believer in Christ. Saints, I want us to stand to our feet. I want to give us a demonstration of how to walk through this awesome, powerful revelation that God gave us.
this great grace birthday gift. You have got to submit and surrender yourself so that you will not be like those in the Old Testament under the law that when the message came, it didn't profit you anything. I don't want to just, you know, believe that just because I preached from the depths of my soul that everybody in here is going to receive it. Some of y'all will go home and won't speak in tongues just deliberately out of meanness. I rebuke you. That ain't the devil, that's you. I rebuke you. God already showed me that. But then he said there were people, there would be people that would reject the message. But you will not find rest and refreshing for yourself. Very first thing you need to do is you need to repent. Repent means I'm going to turn 360 degrees from what I've been believing and what I have, have lacked in doing. But since this revelation has come, I believe God sent apostle to speak into my life today to let me know that I can be set free. And what you want to do is get to the place where, you know how you hear me say I have no dry season? I've given so much until there's never a time when I ever have a lack anymore. I'm not catching up with harvest. Harvest continue to be perpetual in my life because when you don't stop giving, you eventually catch up. The Bible says we'll come to the place, especially in the end times, when your giving and your receiving will run into each other. I believe I'm in that place. And you can get there, too. It's not just for select people. Some of y'all pay your tithes sometime. You apologize, say you're going to do better, and you don't. But you don't know that's a stronghold of poverty holding you locked up. You need to repent. You need to pray in, in the Holy Ghost to when you get your money, you have the Holy Spirit give you revelation that that's not your money if you touch the first tenth of it. And that you're a thief. And I know you don't want to call yourself a thief, but that's all it is because that's God's money. I ain't saying it for me. I'm saying it to help you, and you're going to stay in poverty. You're going to always be going back and forth, back and forth. You a little bit of help, then you fall back again, then you can't pay your bills, and, you, and it's every time you get out of debt, you get back in debt again. Why? Because there is a spirit connected called poverty to you because your mindset has not been changed yet. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Repent and say, God, please forgive me. I know that's your word, not Apostle Cheryl's word. That's your word. That's your pro process to get me from the mammoth system that will kill me to the kingdom system that will bless me forever. But it's not just for me. It's for my, the generations to come. My children's children's children will always be blessed because of what I've done. My grandfather was a tither, and it's always been easy for us things just always bless us. <laughs> it's his blessing that we're reaping, and I know that. And my grandchildren and children's children are going to reap it too because we have taught them of the Lord and they have seen me live that lifestyle. Their grandfather lived that lifestyle. Their parents lived that lifestyle. Are y'all hearing me? We got to repent and ask God to help us to turn around from all wrong thinking that I got to be sick, that I got to have this thing going on in me all the time. No, you don't. Jesus took it to the cross. If God meant for you to have it, he wouldn't have put it on his son. I don't care how long you've had it. I don't care if mom and them had it. It's not for you. You got a new DNA, and you got to focus on that praying the Holy Ghost till them lying devils loose you. You got to find some scripture, saints, that speak to the situation and the circumstance, the promises of God. Get in the Bible, spend some time, then put your finger on those verses and speak what God says and speak it personally to yourself and about yourself. You say, I have God's word for my healing. And you speak the scriptures for my deliverance, for my prosperity, whatever it is. And then you speak to the Father in the name of Jesus, the word of God concerning your need, your healing, your deliverance. And you begin to say, as I do this, I am confident that your word will not return to you void, Father, but it's going to accomplish that which you purpose to do in my life. Because remember what we read? It's already finished. It's already been finished. 
my prosperity, my health, my everything, my children, my grandbabies' deliverances have already happened, and I've got to speak those things in the realm of the spirit. You've got to begin to say, Jesus already took my infirmities. I don't care what the devil say. Come on. Therefore, I will speak with great boldness and confidence, pray in the Holy Ghost, and then he'll give you the message in your own language and just speak it out. Take authority over satanic forces. We learn, we're learning in Bible study the strategies, and we are being blessed. You've got to use those strategies every day against the enemy. And you deal directly with those satanic forces. Satan, you and your foul spirits of darkness, I have the keys of the kingdom of heaven to enforce the victory of Jesus over you. I bind you. I rebuke you. Use those words that we've taught you. In the name of Jesus, every knee has to bow. Glory to God. I loose you from your assignment against me. You got to speak directly to the devil. I come against you in the authority of the name of Jesus. I destroy your works. I loose your bonds off my body, off my finances, my children. I don't care what. Then go into tongues and then come back into English. You are compelled to obey everything I speak to you because I speak in the name that's above every name. And switch your attention once you deal with the devil to Jesus, the great physician the one who died on the cross for you. Get your focus on him now. You've dealt with the devil. You've already repented. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You're using your authority and your power. Now get your attention on Jesus. Switch your attention. Thank you, Jesus. You have already taken care of this condition for me at, the, at Calvary's cross. You already paid in full for my healing, my deliverance, my prosperity, my children, my grandchildren. You are now in the great high priest. You are now the great high priest of my confession. And I thank you that you're working every day in your present day ministry to bring it to pass in my life. So I'm going to hold fast to my confession of faith. Say those words to him. You, God will give you your words. If the symptoms or situations try to come back or persist, you speak directly to the devil again. You're a liar. There's no truth in you. I know the truth of God's word. The truth has already made me free. The works have already been finished. Symptoms, situations, in the name of Jesus, God's word has already set me free. Ooh. Since my vote is the determining factor, not yours. Come on, saints. Since my vote is the determining factor, I exercise my free will choice to agree with the word of God. You cannot make me believe a lie ever again. I refuse to agree with the symptoms. By the word of my mouth, the universal truth of God's word, I'm establishing right now my health, my wholeness, my prosperity. I confirm the word of God that says, by Jesus' stripes, I have already been healed. Speak the word of God aloud. Don't be afraid to speak out. Satan can't read your mind, so don't, don't whisper it or keep it you know, quiet in your head. Keep it in your head while you're talking to the Lord to get the right things to say. But when you open your mouth, you address the devil with words. God's light is being dispensed against all darkness in your life because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen. Father, I pray over your people today and I thank you. In preparation to receive the Holy Communion meal and to release our tithes and offerings, Father, we repent in your presence of thinking wrong, doing wrong. And we ain't going to keep on saying it because that's a demon. And we recognize that a demon would have us become a liar. And we know that liars are not in the kingdom and we don't associate with that. We're the righteousness of God. But in the name of Jesus, Father, we're going to obey you. From this day forward, we turn around and we pray in the Holy Ghost until our flesh gets put under. We're going to bring glory to you in our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of God. If we're in a, a, a relationship that it does not line up with the kingdom of God, Father, we denounce that thing right now. We're not lusting after nothing else. And we're going to pray in tongues until our flesh line up. We don't have to use no sex toys and all, all the kind of crazy crap. We're not going to be watching pornography or none of it. We're not interested in satisfying our nasty flesh because we put that under right now. God said nothing is good in our flesh. But we're going to walk in the spirit. We're going to live holy before our children. And we're going to set a standard. And you're going to help us, Lord God, to say no to our children. Well, we need to say stop that, take that off, and you're not going to live here doing that. 
we're not going to be afraid to talk to our children. That everything in this house is going to serve God. Just like you get up for your job, you get up on Sundays and come to church. It ain't going to be the last thing on your mind because I'm going to be held accountable before God. In the name of Jesus, Yahshua, we have to start a standard because we know what's right. But God's not changing his mind in Jesus' name. And if they try to fight you, do what I did with my kids. They didn't always get excited about coming. I say we leave in the house now. Whether you got on underclothes or outside clothes, get in the car now. Shout out both sides. Take authority, and God will help you. If you make the first step, he'll help you. We have to make the first step. Anything that's going on in our lives, Father, that don't line up with you, we put a stake in it today. You have taught us some stuff today we cannot turn around. We've seen it in the word, and we will not change our minds ever again. I thank you that we're going to wash ourselves in that word so much. We're going to go over that scripture. We're going to tell everybody we know. Hallelujah, that's in the body of Christ, that our birthday gift was the grace gift of God of the tongues. It's a powerful tool, and we claim break, breakthrough right now for every area of our life and every person in our life. And God, I thank you, they and you going to see the difference because this is the beginning of a brand new day for us. We will never be the same again. We will not be bewitched by the devil He's a defeated foe, already been sentenced, and Father spoiled him on the cross of Calvary. And the church in agreement says, amen. amen. I receive the word. Give the Lord praise. Come forth, our, our officers. I believe God. Come on and tell the Lord thank you.